People have given us um, many, many observations of what they've seen during their lives in Kogluktuk, as well as many, many recommendations for how the community can respond. The scientists have said, although they have observed some conditions in Kogluktuk that they think the community should be planning for, there needs to be more study before they can say for sure just how uh, severe these impacts would be. And that's a good thing because it means that you have time to do some planning and to think about how you want your community to develop in the future. Elizabeth and Ken have come here. They're part of a research project. What can a community, and, we're, and not Ottawa, and not Vancouver, and not Toronto, but a community here on the shores of the Arctic Ocean, what can we do, or what should we do, if there is global warming? To help us figure out what are the most important issues for this community to, um, to work on, to make sure that you're as protected as possible for any changes that could happen because of climate change. What time frame, what has to happen right away, what could happen a little bit later and what we could leave for, for quite a while. And then most importantly, talk about who's responsible, quite specifically who's responsible. Um, maybe it would be the Hamlet, maybe it would be the GN, and maybe it would be organizations or individuals here in your own community, like uh, the students or the elders or the mayor. <laughs> Right here, we went almost 40 degrees change in a few days. I don't think that's been seen a lot. But the big, big, big winner, and I think this keeps coming back as our uh, um, top priority, no matter who we talk to, is this issue of how you can travel around on the land, particularly um, in the summer, so that the trails are safe.
and how we can implement them and set them in order of what's most important, what should be done first.